Hello and welcome back to the channel. So you join me on another dreary, miserable, rainy day in the UK, hence why I'm filming indoors. So a company called KNF recently reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in trying out their new ND filters. Now it was four years ago where I was in a hide at Lackford Lakes and I was complaining that I didn't have any ND filters for my 100 to 400 lens. So when KNN offered me these in exchange for a review, I knew I definitely had to say yes. So what is an ND filter and what can it do for you? Effectively, an ND filter is like sunglasses, but for your lens. We can use an ND filter to decrease our exposure. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, there's a few reasons why in photography and videography. In photography, you see them more commonly used when people want to photograph waterfalls or perhaps seascapes to smooth out the motion of the water we have a long shutter speed or a slow shutter speed. Now, the problem with that is, particularly with you know a lot of modern lenses, they're so fast that the exposure is just too bright. The only way we can decrease that exposure is lowering our ISO, but you can only go so far. The only other option is to increase our aperture. Again, you can only go so far, and you're also messing with your kind of creative intent and you potentially could be introducing diffraction into the image as well. Now that's where an ND filter comes in. What we can do is place that on the end of our lens and as they're like sunglasses, we can decrease the amount of light that's coming in, which means we can actually have a longer shutter speed enabling us to get the image we're after. They're also particularly useful in videography and it's something that I've wanted for wildlife for quite some time. Now, I watch a lot of small YouTube channels, particularly on wildlife. I know what it's like to try and run a YouTube channel when it's hard. And one of the things that kind of bugged me is that it's quite obvious a lot of people when they're filming, particularly birds in flight, that either they're not using ND filters or they're not using the correct shutter speed. Quite often I'll see people I'll see their videos and it doesn't quite look right. The footage just doesn't quite look right. And the reason for that is in videography, we have something called the 180 degree shutter rule. Effectively what it means, and this goes back since like the dawn of modern cinema, what it means is that your shutter speed should be twice your frame rate. So for example, if you're filming at 25 frames a second, you want a shutter speed of 150th. If you're filming at 130, if you're filming at 30 FPS, you want it to be 160th. If you're filming at 60 frames a second, 125th of a second, and so on and so forth. That will mean that you get nice, realistic looking motion blur. And particularly with like wildlife, you're trying to capture animals in the natural environment. You want the image to look natural. When you have too, sh too slow of a shutter speed or too fast of a shutter speed, you get taken out of that natural, pleasing looking image. And that's why ND filters are invaluable. They can also be useful in wildlife photography. So for example, you're at Bempton Cliffs and you wanna get shots of perhaps a load of gannets and you want it to be nice and give it an artistic look to your image and you wanna decrease your shutter speed. Again, you can't really do that unless you've got an ND filter. So this is where these KNF concept filters will come into play. Now these are part of the Nano X series range, and this is a ND8 to 128. ND filters aren't measured in stops. So if you have a stop of light, one stop will be ND2, two stops ND4, three stops ND8, and so on and so forth. So this is a three to seven stop ND filter, and it's just a nice, sort of range to be at. So it comes in this nice little box, which arrived completely undamaged, it's well protected. And if we open up the box now, we get greeted this nice little carrying box. Now I always look after all of my gear really, really well. Uh, I'm not rich, so it pays to, to look after your gear. And yeah, there's the little ND filter. And what I find particularly useful about this ND filter 
is the hydrophobic coating on it. And I tested it out downstairs in my sink earlier on. And the water just runs straight off the lens. That coating is really, really good. If you're using it outside in the rain or perhaps by the ocean, you're not, you don't have to worry because that water literally just slides straight off the ND filter. And what's particularly good about these ND filters is you don't get the cross pattern that's sometimes associated with variable ND filters. So yeah, what I'll do, I'll show you how easy it is to mount to my 100 to 400 lens. So it's got a 72 millimeter filter thread in, on my particular lens. And there we go, that's now on the front of the lens, ready to go. So let's just say, for example, I'm out filming a fox in bright daylight. I'm at f6.3 and I'm filming at 25 FPS, so I'm at 150th uh, shutter speed. Now I have actually got Vlog L in this camera. Basically it's a profile that gives you better dynamic range. So the ISO on this is ISO 500 compared to the base ISO of ISO 200. So it's quite bright out. And all I can really do is use my aperture to control the amount of light that's coming in. I don't want to mess with the shutter speed because obviously we want that smooth, natural looking motion blur. So yeah, really I've only got the aperture. But now we have the ND filter on. All I have to do is just turn it to give the desired effect. Now, because we're placing a piece of glass in front of the lens and the subject, there has to be some kind of downside to this. So what I did, I looked at reviews on the ND filter itself, looked up opinions on it, and yes, it's not the most expensive ND filter on the market. I mean, there are ND filters, I won't mention the names, they're two, three or four times more expensive. So I went out to RSPB Lakenheath and tested it out on some bird feeders just to see if I could see an obvious shift in the sharpness or the colours themselves. When I got back to the computer, the colours looked exactly the same and there was no decrease in sharpness. So I thought, okay, I need to do a more rigorous test. So what I did was set up my tripod downstairs. I got a white balance card. And effectively, what I did was take photos. Um, I set a custom white balance using the white balance card. So the only variation in the shots was the shutter speed. Obviously, with the ND filter on, it would require a slower shutter speed but I've negated any kind of skew in the results. The lighting stayed exactly the same and I put a 10 second timer on the tripod so it wouldn't affect anything. And to be honest, there was a minor shift in the color, but I'll get back to that in a minute. I also tested, I have a, a vape and basically I zoomed in on that and tested for sharpness and the sharpness looks, it looks the same. So, Back to the colour cast. Now what I noticed, people online said that there was a slight green colour cast. What I noticed is that the white on the white balance card looked more slightly more yellow, perhaps a, a tiny bit more green. I mean, it would make sense when you look at the um, ND filter. There is a slight kind of green sort of tint to it. But yeah, so I looked at the image and thought, it just looks a bit warmer. The original image taken without the ND filter looks quite cool. The image with the filter looks warmer. Well, what I noticed as well with the sharpness tests is that I had slightly more contrast and slightly more saturation in my image. So combined with a warmer image that's more saturated and with more contrast, they're generally the images that people prefer. So in this very specific test that was designed to show up any flaws, we've actually ended up with a positive result, at least in my findings. Out in the real world, out filming and photographing nature or doing landscapes, I don't think you're going to see that those, dis or those disadvantages because we're not shooting 
objects that are completely white in the entire frame. So yeah, I think really there's there's no reason to, to not use an ND filter, particularly for video, and that's what I'll be using it for. So yeah, hopefully um, this video's given you an idea of what ND filters can do for you. And the cherry on the cake is that KNF have actually given me a discount code. So you can actually get 10% off of all of their products. Now KNF started off a few years ago, they're quite a small, small company. And I did actually purchase one of their filters for my 12 to 60. And it's just amazing how the quality of the filters have gone up drastically. My old um, ND filter was, you can definitely tell there was less sharpness, there was more of a color cast, and it left the, the cross pattern. With this new filter, that's just not an issue anymore. And what's really cool about KNF is they don't just make ND filters, they've got a vast selection of products like backpacks, tripods, and so on. And just by using my discount code, you can get 10% off. So full disclosure, obviously KNF did send me out this filter for free. I've been very <laughs> honest about it. And uh, yeah, I will um, definitely be using this going forwards. If you follow any of the affiliate links, I'm going to put um, links to all the common telephoto lenses because the beauty of buying a big telephoto ND filter is that because of their large size, now I know this is a micro four thirds camera, so it's not particularly large, but I don't have to go out and buy ND filters for every single one of my lenses. This has a 72 millimeter filter thread. So let's just say my 12 to 60, off the top of my head, I can't remember what the filter thread size is, but let's just say you've got a, a lens with a 20 millimeter filter thread. All you need to do is buy a step up ring. So a 20 to a 72 mil step up ring, and you can mount this ND filter on any of your lenses. You won't have to go out and buy several ND filters, which um, I've known some people to make that mistake before. Obviously it won't work on anything larger, but yeah, that's just one thing to note. Once you buy one of these, these filters, it's pretty much a one-time only purchase. And like I said, KNF do make various different filters from neutral density to polarizing filters. And yeah, for the price, I think it's, it's absolutely perfect. On the 100 to 400 lens, that's really cool is I can still use my lens hood with it. So obviously we can't really adjust um, the ND filter once the lens hood's on, but a lot of these filters, you can't even use your, your um, lens hood with it. So that's a massive pro. So yeah, um, thank you very much for watching this video. If you have found it useful, um, please hit it with a thumbs up. And if you've got any questions or comments, um, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. If you've got um, any particular questions, I'll definitely get back to you. So yeah, thanks a lot and uh, till next time.